drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered to you by edupedia world previous lecture we discussed about the different alloying elements with carbon amount less than 2.1% that is we discussed the different kind of steel today we will discuss iron carbon alloys with carbon uh, greater than 2.1% that those kind of alloys which have carbon greater than 2.1% are known as cast iron but mainly carbon is uh, between 3 and 4.5% we don't go to very low carbon nor do we go to very high carbon like 5% uh, or 6% this is the range normally used now cast iron has a low po melting point compared to other iron and uh, steel hence they are casted now how do we understand uh, the low melting point if you remember the iron carbon phase diagram again let us try to see in the cast iron region if you remember the eutectoid region okay if you remember the eutectoid region then uh, rather the eutectic region then 1147 degrees celsius this was 4.3 percent okay and this is the eutectic region so though iron melting point is 1538 degrees Celsius this is the iron melting point the eutectic temperature is only 1147 degrees Celsius which is quite low right and if we go in the range 3 to 4.5 percent it remains somewhere between uh, 1200 to 1300 degrees Celsius 1200 degrees Celsius to 1300 degrees Celsius thereby this temperature is very low compared to 1538 or rather relatively low compared to 1538 that is the melting point high of iron therefore compared to that temperature it is said to have a low melting point now at this melting point since it can be melted easily comparatively speaking this is casted casting means you melt the metal alloy and then you pour the liquid metal into a preformed shape that is the process of casting fine there, there thereby the name cast iron comes because it is formed by casting processes rather than other forming processes like machining or rolling this cast iron can be brittle okay hence casting is preferable cast iron because it has a la large amount of carbon percentage is, tends to be brittle therefore it is uh, casting is the preferable fabrication technique machining rolling those things can be difficult there can be cracks and uh, failure during other forming techniques casting is the preferable technique as you can see in this we sh will have cementite formation because at this end at 6.67 percent we have cementite right Th this cementite though we have shown here it is not the most stable phase cementite under favorable conditions would like to convert itself to graphite and ferrite so fe3c under favorable condition would like to convert to graphite carbon in the graphite form and ferritic iron this is the most stable phase in terms of in, in energy that is this is the energetically favorable phase this is metastable okay so this is important to note that cementite might decompose to graphite and ferrite under suitable condition we'll see why this is important now cast iron can be categorized into four categories gray cast iron white cast iron nodular cast iron and malleable cast iron now we'll see each of them one by one 
ग्रे कास्ट आयरन हैज अ कार्बन परसेंटेज नॉर्मली बिटवीन टू पॉइंट फाइव टू फोर परसेंट विच इज सिमिलर टू द जेनरिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ कास्ट आयरन बट इन एडिशन टू कार्बन सिलिकन एग्जिस्ट इन क्वाइट अ हाई परसेंटेज दैट इज वन परसेंट टू थ्री परसेंट सिलिकन एग्जिस्ट इन ग्रे कास्ट आयरन this provides the favorable condition the presence of silicon in addition to carbon provides the favorable condition for cementite to decompose to graphite and alpha ferrite now this results in flakes of graphite this graphite forms in the form of flakes and that flakes of graphite is surrounded by ferrite matrix in gray cast iron gray cast iron physically speaking is weak and brittle under ten tension so if you do tension test or if the material is under tension it will break easily since it is br brittle under tension now why is it br uh, so this is because the flakes of graphite are really sharp and these sharp flakes of graphite act as stress concentration points thereby even low amount of stress on those concentration points stress concentration points can lead to crack generation and propagation thereby even low amount of tension leads to failure brittle failure due to the presence of sharp graphite flakes fine but when we apply compressive load the grey cast iron has much better strength and ductility so grey cast iron under tension is brittle and uh, weak under compression is quite ductile and has a better strength grey cast iron in the liquid form is very fluid highly fluid therefore grey cast iron can be used to form intricate shapes it being fluid will be able to pass through intricate details of the uh, shape that needs to be cast and it can be cast into very intricate shapes in addition to that economically speaking gray cast iron is the least expensive kind of cast iron the main problem with gray cast iron as i pointed out is it is weak and brittle under tension so this is the main disadvantage of gray cast iron now as a, uh, as i mentioned gray cast iron has flakes of graphite which are sharp and pointed if somehow we converted those flakes into spherical particles then we would we can improve the under tension properties of gray cast iron that is exactly what is done in nodular or ductile cast iron what is done is small amount of magnesium or cerium is added to gray cast iron this additional alloying elements help graphite form nodular shape now the graphite being in the nodular shape has does not act as stress concentration sites as a result the properties improve right and nodular cast iron has a matrix of perlite or ferrite and spherical graphite nodules are spread throughout it obviously as i mentioned it is stronger and more duct and ductile than gray cast iron because of the presence of spherical graphite rather than flakes of graphite next let us discuss white cast iron white cast iron contrary to gray cast iron which had high percentage of silicon 1 to 3% white cast iron has less than 1% silicon okay and uh, it is cooled rapidly thereby white cast iron does not have graphite rather it has the metastable cementite in it white cast iron has metastable cementite and the fracture surface if you fracture a white cast iron material then the fracture surface appears white that is exactly from where the name white cast iron is derived the nature of appearance of the fracture surface now if you have a really big chunk of material large amount of uh, material then the cooling rate might not be same throughout the outer surface 
may cool really rapidly the inner core may take larger amount of time to cool since cementite formation in white cast iron depends on rapid cooling it can so happen that the outer surface cools rapidly enough to form cementite whereas inner surface does not cool rapidly enough resulting in white cast iron in the outer region and in the inner region where the cooling is slow enough gray cast iron can be formed okay so there can be segregation of microstructure if a bulky material is uh, tried to be produced without sufficient amount of cooling white cast iron due to the presence of cementite and uh, alloying elements is very hard and brittle mainly due to cementite presence okay and its uh, hard nature leads to wear resistant resistance properties and that is by why it is used in rollers in mills because for rolling purposes you need to have better resistance to wear also in railroad wheels if the wheels were to wear out very easily while uh, the train moves then that would lead to catastrophic failure so we want something which has very good wear properties white cast iron the with the presence of cementite provides those properties okay now let us see the final kind of cast iron which is known as malleable cast iron malleable cast iron is made by heating what white cast iron to 800 to 900 degrees celsius for a long time under neutral atmosphere if you remember from the previous slide white cast iron had cementite right now this treatment this high exposure to high temperature at long time converts the white uh, converts the cementite to graphite okay since this is the most stable phase this is the favorable condition which drives the conversion of cementite to graphite and cementite can decomposes to graphite and obviously rest alpha ferrite this graphite which is formed is formed in form of clusters and is surrounded by ferrite or perlite matrix so we have a matrix of ferrite or perlite and in that is graphite clusters this provides good strength and ductility the presence of graphite rather than cementite provides good ductility and the strength is not really compromised much but since it no longer has cementite this malleable cast iron cannot be used in uh, applications where we new need wear resistance the good ductility leads to its name malleable malleable means it is easily it can be easily formed into sheets right and for that we need good ductility and uh, this is exactly from where the malleability is derived the presence of graphite rather than cementite okay this has been a birds eye view about the different kind of cast iron the previous lecture we discussed about the different kind of steel that is present uh i will close today's lecture with this next lecture we will see some other metal alloy systems till then have a great day goodbye